In this video, I'm going to be explaining just how much performance hardware real-time OS can offer and the original functions that make that performance possible. Let's start by showing you just how high our hardware real-time performance is. We'll start with API or system call execution time. For this example, we're using a 100 megahertz Cortex M3 and measuring using an in-house test program. The minimum time our hardware real-time OS needed was 0 0.90 microseconds. The maximum was 3.0 microseconds. This maximum time is the theoretical maximum value, in other words, the worst case value, for the hardware real-time OS and will never be exceeded. For the software real-time OS, however, the minimum time was 1.9 microseconds and the maximum was 14.4 microseconds. Software Real-Time OS's maximum execution time here is only the maximum value produced by this test program. However, in a real use environment, we have no way of knowing the worst case performance values. Next, let's look at interrupt response time. Again, we're using a 100 megahertz Cortex M3 and measuring with an in-house test program. For our hardware real-time OS, the minimum time was 1.0 microseconds. The maximum was 2.0 microseconds. For the software real-time OS, however, the minimum time was 0.84 microseconds and the maximum was 4.4 microseconds. Again, this maximum value only shows performance in the test environment. We still don't know the worst case performance in other environments. And this value here represents the theoretical maximum or worst case value possible for the hardware real-time OS. So you can see from comparing hardware real-time OS and software real-time OS that not only are API execution and interrupt response times faster with hardware RTOS, but it has added the benefit of predictable maximum times. Also, clearly the difference between the minimum and maximum times in a hardware real-time OS is very small for both API execution time and interrupt response time, which is a very important feature. Next, I want to discuss how our hardware real-time OS is able to perform so well. Now, of course, simply implementing software OS functions in hardware has resulted in faster speeds. But I'd like to talk about some of the ideas we've used to improve performance in other ways, too. I'll start with the tick offloading function. A tick is the internal RTOS processing for measuring time. The tick activation interrupt occurs periodically, which activates the tick process. This results in applications being interrupted at fixed periods, and therefore a drop in CPU use efficiency. This is a serious issue. In addition, the tick process is a critical one, so it is run with interrupts disabled. In other words, any interrupts that occur during the tick process must wait, which causes longer interrupt latency. Also, as I mentioned before, the tick is the RTOS internal processing for measuring time, and the more precise that clock is, the better. Precision here refers to the interval between the periodic interrupts, and the shorter that interval is, the better the system is. However, if you shorten that interval, the tick process occurrence rate increases, meaning it's not possible to shorten it very much. So there is a limit to how precise you can make the clock, which is another serious issue. So we installed the tick offloading function on our hardware real-time OS. This function implements tick handling completely in hardware. Tick handling is run in the same way, but at this time no interrupts occur. This means that even when tick handling runs, the CPU can continue executing its task uninterrupted and so we improve CPU's efficiency. 
What's more, the hardware runs this tick process within a single cycle time period, so no interrupts are generated. The result of all this is that interrupt latency due to tick handling is completely eliminated. Also, as I mentioned, tick handling can be done in a really short time, meaning we can shorten the tick interval as well. This allows a huge improvement in precision. So you can see that by including tick offloading in our hardware real-time OS, we are able to offer a huge benefit to real-time control. Next, I'd like to discuss a function called Hardware ISR. To begin with, let's look at how the process runs in conventional systems when an interrupt occurs. First, task A is running like this. An interrupt occurs here. Then, handling transfers to the RTOS. The RTOS saves the values of the CPU registers and activates the ISR, or interrupt service routine. The ISR checks for the interrupt source and invokes the corresponding API. So the API is invoked and then executed. When it finishes, the ISR ends. Now about this API here, when it's executed, the waiting task will be activated. And if it moves to ready, a context switch will occur if it has higher priority than task A. That means that task B will be executed. As you can see, a single interrupt can cause a very complex processing situation. However, with hardware RTOS, this blue section here is all implemented in hardware, resulting in very fast execution. Implementing this entire ISR function here in hardware is what we call hardware ISR. So basically, using hardware ISR means that this period from here to here is all run in hardware, meaning it can be executed very fast. With a conventional software RTOS, the interval to switch from task A to task B can take from 5 to 10 microseconds, and possibly more, on a 100 megahertz operating clock. A hardware RTOS with hardware ISR installed can run it in 2 to 3 microseconds. 3 microseconds is the maximum theoretical limit and meaning it will never take longer. So by using hardware ISR and running the entire routine in hardware, the CPU can be used for other work during that time, improving overall CPU efficiency. Also, the ISR is usually run with interrupts disabled. So again, with ISR run on hardware, that interrupt disabled period is completely eliminated. There's also no need to make a handler when this function is used. Everything can be run as a task. Since tasks can be activated quickly, you simply raise the priority levels of the tasks activating time critical processes. So our hardware real-time OS is not only a hardware implementation of a real-time OS, but also has a way to implement systems with greater real-time performance through functions like tick offloading and hardware ISR. So then when we consider the optimum places we should be using this hardware real-time OS with all its features, clearly the answer is systems requiring high real-time performance. For example, take a system like this, which must perform cyclic processes. At a certain interval, a task is activated by an interrupt like so. Or during this interval, an upper level system sends data over the network, which is used in a certain calculation. Then the result must be returned via the network, all of which repeats periodically. There are all kinds of other tasks that need to be executed in a similar way. These kinds of systems have very strict demands when it comes to the time between interrupts and task activation, or they have very frequent system calls and frequent task switches. They need a real-time OS with very high real-time responsiveness and as little overhead as possible. I think all of that makes it clear that hardware RTOS offers enormous advantages for systems like this. I'll finish up by recapping what I've talked about so far. 
Using hardware real-time OS can dramatically reduce RTOS overhead. Specifically, that can greatly improve CPU use efficiency. It also significantly reduces interrupt disabled periods and decreases the number of interrupts. And finally, it allows greater tick precision. The benefit all of this brings is the ability to activate programs much more precisely. In other words, by decreasing the interrupt disabled period and then offering predictable defined maximum processing times, you can activate programs with higher precision. That all results in much greater real-time performance. And one more thing, by reducing real-time OS overhead, multitask processing is also much faster. This is particularly good for network control, which requires frequent switching from multiple tasks. That finishes up my discussion of hardware real-time OS performance. For more information, please see the Renesis website. In the next video, I'll be talking about next-generation hardware real-time OS. Thanks for listening.